so hello guys today i'll be completing part 2 of nbsc 2016 question paper nagaland portion for 74 marks for so i'll be completing the <coughs> part 2 from 2 5 10 and 20 marks so let's start question number one name the state animal of nagaland so the state animal of nagaland is bos fontalis and it is also known as Mithun and it is the state animal of Nagaland and one important point is that it is also um, it is also used in the state emblem the state government emblem we use uh, the Mithun as a symbol of wealth and prosperity so next what is the largest city in Nagaland so the largest city in Nagaland is Dimapur and it is 121 square kilometer next mention the names of the main rivers in Nagaland so for two marks you can mention four or eight points so Doyang, Diku, Dansari, Milak, Likimro, Zuza, Dizu and Lanya next what is the official language in Nagaland so official language is English which was used as an official language since 1967 and it is also a medium of instruction in Nagaland Next, what is Kale? So we already know that Kale. Suppose this is a village. Suppose this is the, uh, uh, Naga village. And each village is divided into many Kales. That is, a Kale is a portion that is inhabited by people belonging to the same clan or different clan. So this is called Kale. And that, and for definition, it is a distinct Naga institution that brings together several clans within a village community. So multiple clans come together to form a village once membership to kill is by birth or heredity and no village decision can be taken without the consent of the kill and it is known by different names Mebu in our Asa and Sema Yanko in Lota next what is Gena Gena is of Angami origin and it is also known as it, it is it means it is forbidden and during a Gena if, uh, everything comes to a standstill nothing is allowed to do in a Gena period and it is forbidden to travel or eat certain types of food and the Gena can last for several days and it depends on occasion celebrated either by the whole family or certain individual and towards the end of the Gena a feast of merit is, um, is celebrated which marks the beginning of new agriculture cycle and it is found in all Naga tribes next what is the significance of the 16 point agreement so the 16 point agreement was submitted in to the indian government in 1960 and it was submitted by the naga nagaland naga people's convention under the leadership of dr m gongliba and and <coughs> this provided for the creation of nagaland as the 16th state of india on 1st of December 1963, 4.6 unit led to provision of 300 Article 371A and it constituted a new legislative assembly for Nagaland and creation of new local self government as village council, range council, and tribal council. So we're gonna add four points to this creation of Nagaland state special provisions for our under Article 371A for Nagaland, uh, new legislature and uh, provided for local self government under it. So what next is what is inner line permit? So inner line permit in simple terms it is a travel document that is issued by the government of India to allow people to travel to Indian citizen uh, to allow people to travel into Indian territory and that is protected for a limited period and inner line permit is uh, is provided for Nagaland, Mizoram and Arunachal Pradesh. So these are the uh, these are the states where inner line permit is provided and this was in Nagaland and for Nagaland it was a remnant of the Bengal Eastern Frontier Regulation Act 1873 basically inner line permitted is a permit is provided to outsiders that is non Nagas for traveling or for settlement for, uh, for a limited period of time and this was a remnant of the Bengal Eastern Frontier Regulation Act 1873 next what is the main objective of the main power planning? So main power planning main's objective is to decide what kind of stuff is required for department. So was for for a finance department. 
what kind of service you got for example junior divisional accountant or lower tax assistant LDA or junior associate so this um, so this requirement is provided by the main power planning and it allows proper utilization resources in a department keeping in mind available infrastructure market fluctuation etc so it provides over utilization of resources suppose now how much funds are coming in a department so controlling the uh, utilization of resources in a department is the objective of the main board planning so these two ob these two points you can write next what is general budgeting so in simple term general budgeting means if this is the general budget annual general annual budget for a state then reserving some portion of the budget for women development this is known as gender budgeting that is if the allocation for a general budget is 2500 2, crore if the total annual budget of a state in one year is 2500 crore so under gender budgeting uh, reserving like 100 crore for for development of women is also known as gender budgeting in simple terms so gender gender budgeting is a powerful tool for achieving gender equality so as to ensure that benefits of development reach women as well as men it is an ongoing process of keeping gender perspective in policy program and its implementation and review next what is the function of the evaluation directorate of state administration the evaluation directorate of state administration is to undertake evaluation studies that is evaluating the various schemes intervention programs and ways and means to bring improvement in formulation and execution so evaluation directorate is used to evaluate uh, the schemes that are available and ways and means to bring improvement and it provides for two types of planning that is retrospect that is accessing the achievement of the program and per perspective that is for long-term planning and this was set up in october 14 1968 so the main function of the evaluation evaluation directorate is to evaluate the various schemes of the uh, various schemes of the state and center as like the like the national rural livelihood machine or the mahatma gandhi national M and Riga so all the schemes will be evaluated by the evaluation director of said administration and suggest ways and means to to <coughs> to provide improvement and this was set up in 1968 october 14 next at present how many district headquarters are there in england so at present there are two of there are two of district headquarters the recent district being noklak district which was which was added on the 21st of december 2017 so so this is the so there are two of district headquarters in Nagaland. so for five marks let's move on write a short note on the celebrated seasonal climate of Nagaland. so they are saying to provide a short note on the climate condition of Nagaland. so first uh, i will be explaining in point wise so the monsoon climate uh, Nagaland has a monsoon climate with high humidity levels Average rainfall is between two uh, eighteen hundred to two thousand five hundred millimeter, or just say two thousand to two thousand to two thousand five hundred, and it is usually lasts between the month of May to September. And average temperature is between twenty one and forty degrees Celsius. At winter, the temperature does not drop below four degrees Celsius, but frost is common at higher altitude like Zuku and Japfu and. Uh, the state enjoys a health a healthy pleasant climate summer is the shortest season in nagaland which lasts for only a few months and the temperature in summer can rise from 16 degree to 31 degrees celsius and winter makes an early arrival uh, during during november and the maximum average temperature in winter is 24 degrees celsius and after winter strong northwest wind blows across the state in february march causing windy season and um providing for the onset of monsoon so these are the weather conditions that provide celebrates nature in Nagaland.
Next, bring out the linguistic composition of, Nag of the population of Nagaland. Bring out the linguistic composition of population of Nagaland. So, linguistic composition of the population of Nagaland. So, the the suppose this is the state of Nagaland. It is divided into many districts, and each district has its own com its own uh, population. So, uh, its own language and dialect. So, if this is this is the state of Nagaland. So the in um, parent speaks another language. Mogukchung speaks another uh, language. Mon in Mon people speak different language. Dunsang different language. So even though we all go Nagas ourselves, but there is difference in language. So <coughs> the Nagas of Nagaland are divided into a number of tribes and sub tribes. So it is divided into Lotha, Sema, Angami, and even within the tribes, there are many sub tribes like different villages. And there are 16 official tribes and 22 sub tribes. And each tribe is distinct from one another in terms of custom, language, attire, and social norms. And there are about 30 Nag Nagatonal language and dialects. So if we count the dialects, there are over 30. And the unifying factor in this complex state is English, which was ratified in 1967. Uh, Nagaland Assembly, and this is a medium of instruction and education. And it is the official language since 1967. And historically, there was friendship between Nagas and Ahoms to establish barter system. As a result of this necessity, Nagas had to learn a chest language of this broken form of Assamese called Nagamese. And all Naga tribes have several uh, villages speaking their own dialect. For example, even within the house, uh, the village, uh, the the language is divided into Jungli, Mungsan, Jangi, etc. So there are many languages even within the tribe. And and this is provided in this. For example, it is common that for Jungli, Mungsan, and Jangi speakers to converse together and speak together, speak in his own language and languages spoken in Nagaland are Dinyedi, Ao, Chagesang, Jang, Konyak, Kham, Kuki, Kuchari, etc. So these are the where uh, these are the various linguistic composition of the population of Nagaland. So for five marks you can elaborate and do 100 to 150 words. No need to explain more. Briefly delineate the powers and and duties of a commissioner of district administration in Nagaland. So basically, this question is asking to define the powers of a deputy commissioner. So, deputy commissioner is the overall head of administration in a district, and under him, uh, the the deputy commissioner works on his behalf and matters relating to finance, appointments, village recognition, relief, rehabilitation, establishment, matter pass through him before con before consideration by the government, and it also. Uh, provides for procurement of vehicles, red blankets, furniture, and it also provides for bu uh, budgetary sub allocation under DDOs. And to SSM, there are many. The hierarchy is from deputy commissioner to uh, from uh, commissioner to additional commissioner, deputy commissioner, additional deputy commissioner, and STO and EAC, and a host of minister staff to that of LDA and registrar. So Deputy Commissioner is responsible for maintaining the law and order in the state and it is through him that all all other admi administrative officers work under him in a in a district and he is the nerve center of uh, communication between all the uh, between all the officers and he also acts as a coordinating body between the Assam rifles, the BSFs and the police and all under work all work under him and the deputy commissioner is also responsible for imposing section 144 that is curfew shoot at sight shoot at sight and various other powers are under him and also the deputy commissioner is also uh, he has the power to pronounce a death sentence however this death sentence can be provided only after approval from the high court and also he he is the chairman of the district rural development authority 
and the district disaster management authority so all other all other organization are under the deputy commissioner so deputy commissioner is the main uh, is the he is responsible for administering law and order and various other functions are performed under the deputy commissioner so we can write this next what is the importance of gomboras in administration of nagaland so gombora means village elders in assamese and it is nominated by the village council and authorized by the government to act and to act as assistance to deputy commissioner in village administration so he is responsible for administration in village and he is also the spokesperson of the community and the number of gomboras depend on the population and localities and he is integral part of administrative and governance of the village and he is the one who interprets the customary law of the land and he is also selected by the clans, kills and village council for what are names to the government and he acts as the agent of the government and gomboras are appointed by law of the land and they are not by traditional institution themselves and they are responsible for, ma for maintaining law in order and um, interpreting the customary law is the job of the gombor so this um, this is the main importance of gomboras in administration of nagaland so next for 10 marks why is disaster management important for nagaland so if uh, for 10 marks if you write then we have to in if in, uh, we have to write at least one and a half page for 10 marks so in exam no need to write so much just stick to the point and you will be able to score good marks so the question is asking what is the disaster management important for nagaland so we already know that nagaland is prone to many hazards that is many prone to many disasters in nagaland and it varies from geological hazards like earthquakes landslides cloud bursts drought and forest fire and the frequency and intensity of hydrometeorological hazards are compounded by climate change so climate change is also adding to the uh, factors of uh, climate uh, to the to the disaster and and it is impacting on horticulture our crops human settlements villages and human and animal health true and everywhere nagaland has been plunged into a state of crisis due to heavy sandstorm even recently recently during to, uh, during the starting of 2021 the Zugo valley was infested by forest fire so natural disaster are 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 occurring almost every year and the area of low lying hills gets flooded and submerged in larger in larger parts of the mobile requiring hectic evacuation and rescue operation resulting in casualties in human livestock extra so if not only in plain not only in hilly areas but also in plain areas due to the due to the river inundation uh, it has been causing floods in low lying areas in in dimapur and climate induced disaster have induced heavily on the development of front for estate like nagaland because nagaland being a development de deprived state uh, this disaster are impacting our developmental projects and infrastructures are washed away or getting destroyed by landslides and in the recent years due to climate change nagaland also has, has been experiencing micro effect of climate change and it has led to state it has led state towards more vulnerable and hazardous zone causing hazardous changes in rainfall having huge effect to a growth state economy even in 2021 the the rainfall has not been very good and so it is affecting the uh, crop productivity of our state so to counter this the nagaland disaster management authority was enacted in 2005 and it was instituted it was constituted to bring institutional mechanism for management of disaster in the state uh, and this can be done with political and administrative machinery to make it more responsive while involving active participation of bodies social organization institution tribal hosts etc and the participation and partnership in all levels of planning will be encouraged so for this you can write uh, why nagaland is prone to many disaster uh, earthquakes floods and um, forest fire and also how to mitigate the climate change so next 20 marks we explain the role of governor is of special importance in the state of nagaland so the state of nagaland 
in the state of Nagaland, the governor plays a very important role. So, for 20 marks, we can explain a little about the legislative, executive, and judiciary functions of the governor for 10 or 20 for um, 50 to 100 marks. So, so this will be just adding to the answer writing. So, the question is the really the question is asking the special powers of the governor in Nagaland. So the governor derives the special powers from article 371 and he is he has been specifically armed with trust 371 to to exercise his special responsibility and and he is responsible for maintaining law and order in the state of Nagaland as long as as long as there is uh, law and order problem due to the hostile activities of the underground nagas so the the governor has been armed with special responsibility to handle the crisis of law and order in the state and this has been provided by article 371a and and he shall exercise not only during the transitional period but also but also as long as the situation so uh, warrants and to discharge this special responsibility he he shall not hear uh, he shall not be abiding by the um, council of ministers but uh, but acting on his individual judgment and this <coughs> special responsibility has been provided also in the constitution under article 163 so the governor of Nagaland has special responsibility with respect to law and order and and in exercising this special responsibility the governor shall after con consultation with the home ministry he shall act on his individual judgment and this special responsibility will cease to operate when normalcy when normalcy returns and the administration of Twinsang area shall also be under his um and un under his command and the this provision has been ruled but the governor of nagaland is responsible for formation of a regional council for the st state of twinsang however this provision has been uh, removed by the by the this by the representatives of the twinsang district in some districts and under this regional council he has the power to nominate some members to the legislative assembly Nagalin legislative assembly um, and also he is responsible for the Dunsang district for a period of 10 years or until such time when the tribes of Dunsang are capable of shouldering the own responsibility of administration so um, Along with the form, along with the power to form the regional council, the governor of Nagaland is responsible for for carrying out the administration of Dinsong district. However, this provisions has been removed uh, and no longer applied. And along with this, the miscellaneous powers of a uh, go, uh, powers of the governor is that he is responsible for the appointment and chairman of the public service nagaland public service commission and he is the chief rector of nagaland university chancellor of global open university visitors of the institute of chartered financial analysts of india university nagaland and he is the visitor of the christian institute of health science and research and chairman of all also the chairman of northeast zone cultural center and he is the ex official president of the raja sainik board and indian red cross society so along with the special responsibility of maintaining law and order in Nagaland for as lo for so long as law and order problem continues the special the governor shall carry out the special responsibility we can write that for 10 marks and for 10 marks you can explain this additional special responsibility that is appointment of chairman and members chief rector changeler and visitors of this all institutions so if you write this then we'll be able to at least amount to if possible from out of 20 marks you can be able to score at least 14 to 15 marks so <clears throat> with this so with this you uh, the second part of the video is 
and that's all i hope you like this video please like and subscribe for more videos upcoming thank you